Hi everyone, I'm coming to you today with a very special announcement. Um, for those who don't know me personally, um, my name is Anita, I'm 31 years old, and as I record this today, on Sunday the 28th of August, in exactly five weeks time, on Sunday the 2nd of October 2022, I will be running the London Marathon. I'll be running for Dementia UK and fundraising for them as part of their marathon team, Team Dementia UK. Now, I've chosen to run for Dementia UK because I'm actually running the marathon in memory of my granddad, Brian Lowe, who actually passed away four months ago today on April the 28th, 2022. Uh, it's been a difficult few months, um, but I feel for me that running the marathon is a way to honour him. Um, and I'd like to tell my story, um, just so you know a little bit about me and why I've chosen to run the marathon. So, if we go back to that day, which is probably the worst day of my life, on Thursday the 28th of April 2022, the idea to run the marathon had already been in my head for a while, actually, um, but I kept it to myself. The thing is, we knew, we knew it was coming, and I felt that doing something, I could do something amazing in his memory, and... I've suddenly found myself announcing to the room that was the living room of my nan's flat to those that were there and with us online that I'd like to run the London Marathon in my granddad's memory. And as I sat there in the flat, I found myself looking it up online, looking up Dementia UK. Um, and after a bit of digging, I found their application page and I literally just pulled my heart out. You see, for the last 11 years of his life, my granddad, Brian, suffered from dementia and Alzheimer's um, and it basically took away who he was um, long before we lost him. I mean, I, I actually moved in with my grandparents um, in 2018. I, I lived in their house for a year and even by that point, my granddad didn't really know who I was. Um, and Dementia UK do amazing work to raise money to help fund research and support nurses in specialist care for dementia so that's why I chose them and actually at my granddad's funeral we raised we had a donation box for Dementia UK so it's a charity that's very quickly become close to my heart and I want to do something amazing for them in memory of my granddad so my fundraising target is £2,500 and I'm hoping with a little bit of support that I can reach that so I've digressed a little bit so kind of back to my story so I was sat in the flat that day and I found myself applying to run the marathon um, and then I didn't hear back for a little while. Um, I got an email back in May saying thank you very much for your interest but the team is full um, and then I completely forgot about it until the 21st of July when I got a phone call completely out of the blue saying that someone had dropped out, they'd reread all the applications and they wanted me to join the team. And um, in that moment, I thought a million different things at once. I was like, okay, I can actually do this for Grandad. But at the same time, there was just one slight, well, major problem in that once, one big flaw in the plan, in that I was involved in a car accident on the 15th of June. So by the time I got this phone call, it had been five weeks since the car accident. I hadn't exercised for five weeks. I was unfit. I put weight on because I was having to sit around while I recovered from my injuries in the car accident, which was um, sort of strains to my upper back and my shoulders, for which at that point I'd been receiving four weeks of physio um, to try and help me get better. And I was doing physio exercises every single day of the week just to try and get myself better again. My initial thought was, no way in hell can I do this. But then I, but then I started to think and I thought, actually, this would be a hell of a challenge. I'm someone who likes a challenge, and I thought, you know what? Grandad would say, just do it. Grandad was, he was always spontaneous. He was, he never kind of made plans or just kind of did set things. Or he, he never said no to, he was this kind of guy who didn't say no to anything. He was always up for a challenge, always up for a laugh. I mean, this was a man who was skiing up until he was 75. I mean, what 75 year old do you know that throws himself down mountains? So I thought, no. I, I can do this, it's okay so it's only 10 weeks and yes I can't even run at the moment but you know, why not give it a go? So I found myself saying well actually maybe I will give it a go but obviously 
the gentleman on the phone I was talking to, um, the fantastic Will over at Dementia UK, was more than concerned for my own, for my well-being and said, you know, are you sure you're going to be able to manage this? So I said, well, I'm, I'm seeing a physio. I'm getting stronger every week. And he said, when do you next see a physio? And I said, in two hours. And he said, at that point, he said, right, we're not going any further with this conversation until you've spoken to your physio. Speak to your physio, speak to your family, have a 24 hours to think about it and then let me know. But the more I thought about it, the more concrete the idea was in my head. And when I saw my physio, she gave me the green light and said, actually, I think you can be ready in 10 weeks. So I began training after I'd accepted my place. And uh, obviously at first I was limited. I couldn't run. I could basically walk and that was about it. So I thought, right, I've not done any exercise for weeks. I need to start building some endurance. So I started walking. And I used the Wirral Way as a training ground because that is actually um, full length. That's just under 13 miles to Hooden and back from West Kirby. So I started off at 10 miles and started building up. Now, I've actually recorded little training vlogs um, for all of these sessions that I've done so far. So I will be uploading them after this video sort of backdated. So from here on out, there's going to be an upload a day as I try and catch up. Um, I started off at 10 miles, then went to... 14 I want to say, but it actually became 15, um, 18, 22, and that's as far as I got. Um, there is a reason for that. So, in the midst of all this, I went back to work. Um, and I actually, I, I work for all mail at the moment, um, I'm posting. Um, so going back to work, I was like, okay, this is extra training. Extra walking every day, because we, we cover a distance of, on average, about sort of between 8 and 12 miles every day, depending on the length of the duty. Um, and I'm sure some people will probably tell me it's more. Uh, so I thought, great, I can, do, I can go back to work, do all this extra walking as well as all my training sessions until I get five days into being back at work. And what happens? I get sick. I caught the mother of all colds and I still have it nine days later. I'm on the end of it now, but unfortunately what it has meant is that I've missed three training sessions. The marathon's in five weeks. So... I mean, it's going to be okay. I sat down with my brother this afternoon and we worked out a, uh, a, a plan for the next five weeks and I should just about be able to squeeze all of my training in between now and the marathon. So it's going to be a challenge, but one I am more than ready for. And you know, that's something my granddad always used to say. He said, things are never straightforward for our family. Obstacles are always thrown in the way. So if anything, this is just things running true to form. Obstacle after obstacle after obstacle, but I'll tell you this, for my granddad, I will be on that start line. I will. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of pictures um, on the end of the video as well so you can kind of see my granddad, Brian Duddleston Lowe. May you rest in peace. I just as a quick aside, um, actually, um, the day we lost him, probably... I'd say grief and a credit card do not go together. Because that night, when I got home, full of just emotion, I just, I couldn't think straight out. I was, I just kind of had this empty feeling. I didn't know what to think. But I knew I wanted to do something to kind of immortalise my granddad. Now, my granddad was an Everson fan. Now, obviously, I'm a, I'm a massive p and &E fan. But I found myself on Everton's website, looking at kits, at shirts and kits. And I thought, look, it was the end, near the end of the season, so they had a sale on, so um, I bought this. Got his name on the back. He was 84 when he passed away, so I got the shirt with Brian, 84 on. Everton Blue. And uh, I'll, th I'll throw a picture on the end as well, and you'll see me in the, uh, in the full kit. Because I didn't just buy the shirt, I bought the full kit, and I've actually got the number 84 on the shorts as well. I will actually be wearing those shorts when I run the marathon. Um, so, you know, I immortalised my granddad forever on the back of an Everton shirt. And uh, this is uh, my Dementia UK running vest that I got that I wrapped in the post the other week. So now I start raising money. And um, if there's anything else you do want to know, obviously, I've kind of jumped about from here here and there um, on this. I'm kind of just improvising it, to be honest. Talking about my granddad's filling me with a lot of emotion. Okay, so um, in the description of this video... You'll find a link to my Just Giving page, uh, set up for me by Dementia UK. 
My full story is on there, so any details I've missed out while I've been rambling on here uh, will be in, in that uh, on that page. Um, so if you want to give my, my story a full read and why I'm running the marathon for my own memory of my granddad for, Dem for Dementia UK, um, if you I, I, if you could support me, that would be absolutely wonderful. Obviously, I know these are hard times we're living in, but you know every every pound goes a long way. Um, and Dementia UK are doing fantastic work to try and support people living with this terrible, terrible disease. So this is me, and thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you can support me, and I'll see you on the start line of the London Marathon. Thank you.